Welcome back. Uh, you're at Ground Zero Salem with your host, Pat. It's Monday. Do you get cases of the Mondays? Do you hate Mondays like Garfield? I got the cure. Unless, of course, I don't get around to uploading this on Monday, which I may not. <laughs> Running short here, I'm gonna have to start with my day soon, but we'll see. Um, we're listening to this split of uh, two Southeast Asian bands, Abhorror and Braindead. Abhorror being from Singapore and Braindead being from Malaysia. I got that right. I've heard a collection of Abhorror's earlier stuff, their demo material that's a lot more raw and beastly. This is a lot more focused kind of death metal, but it's still kind of chaotic. It's really good. Um, Braindead is also similar, kind of untethered sort of thrashy death metal. Um, love the sound of bands from that part of the world. Great stuff. This is on like five labels. Black Winds Productions, Thrashing Fist Productions, Metal Zone Distio. Um, anyway, yeah, just great. It's a $5 pickup from the distro. A little while back, so for the past couple of weeks, I've been kind of stockpiling stuff. Told myself I'm not going to waste uh, too much money on music for a while just because, um, you know, it's the lament of every, every collector scum guy or everybody that's uh, really into their metal addiction. Stuff piles up and then you listen to everything once, you know, same old song and dance. So I'm trying to commit to not spending as much money and just absorbing some of these excellent releases. Um, before the end of the year, a bunch of people, a bunch of distros had sales. Uh, Caligari didn't have a sale, but they're always affordable, you know, cassettes. Um, Dark Descent had a sale that coincided with a bunch of fresh re-releases from the Crypt. And uh, 20 Buck Spin had a fantastic flash sale that was like 20% off and considering their vinyls pretty reasonable as well I sprung on all those um, now that I've gotten the the black metal melodic black metal kind of thematic stuff out of the way there is the rest so I'll start off with the cassettes from Caligari this is the CD CD this is the cassette issue of the new Anatomia and this is fucking incredible cranial obsession uh, the CD and LP have come out on nuclear war now um, I've kind of had a, a relationship with this band somewhat since the beginning. I think the first thing I got was their demo pressed on Die Hard 10-inch when it came out back in the day. Um, this is leaps and bounds past everything else that I've heard. I have a couple of splits. I had one of their previous records and was kind of kind of so-so on it, and I think I flipped it, but Cranial Obsession really, really takes the cake. Everybody that's freaking out over Spectral Voice, not taking anything away from that album, um, I think this is a strong contender for a quote-unquote kind of Death Doom record that might be better. <laughs> parts of it parts of it are uh, really reminiscent of Hooded Menace, um, particularly in the vocal department, and you can, you know, you can definitely see Cathedral first very first album cathedral influence disembowelment you know all the all the usual suspects the first half of the album is uh, lurches along pretty well there's some really simplistic almost like kind of slowed down punk rhythms to it you know almost like discharge playing at half the speed uh, there's some faster moments here and there and then the second half of the album side two just kind of goes into complete dirge territory almost kind of veering off into ambient moments and there's little extra touches of uh you know other kind of instruments outside of uh the usual death metal fair you know there's there's some piano and stuff like that and uh really just well composed um it's great i'm not into substances at all myself um other than the occasional brew dog which i've been holding off on for the past month um and this album makes me feel like I'm on drugs. It's always a good sign, I think. Great stuff. Uh, Caligari, also, I think it, this was their last release of 2017, Boya. Hopefully that's the way it's supposed to be pronounced. Chivalry of Death, Italian band. Comes on this red shell, red cassette with stickers. Very, very cool band. Um, not the easiest to pin down in terms of throwing them into a genre or subgenre. Um, I'd say for lack of a better description, it's 80s death metal with a very like evil kind of 
devil worshiping satanic kind of thing to it. Um, great riffs, very stripped down, occult. But when I say occult, I think of maybe occult in like a, a horror movie sort of sense, and not some egghead, you know, trapezoidal shape inside of a circle, tired ass, you know, cosmic shit. It's more straightforward. Go for the throat. I'm gonna sacrifice you. I'm wearing a hood, kind of thing. Ah, uh, cadaveric incubator. Just great gore grind. Um, excellent riffs, catchy riffs. Short. Uh, kind of reminds me of Carcass and Exhumed and all all the stuff that you'd, you'd expect. Necro Drunks, another great band that you know actually had some songwriting hidden in all the filth, as does this band. I don't know too much about these guys, not sure where they're from. No, don't know. Didn't research it, um, but very good. Don't know who they share members with or anything like that. They could be from Poland, they could be from the American Pacific Northwest, I don't know. But it is on head split, so the chances of the latter are likely. Then we got Repression from Finland. Death Thrash, if you like Deceased, if you like uh, Crucified Mortals, it's kind of along those lines. Very, very beefy thrash metal verging on death metal. Good growled kind of, but pronounced vocals. Quick little, quick little jammer. Three songs, in and out, but it leaves its mark. It's fucking great. Um, this is uh, another Caligari release, and it's along with the Boya... It's uh, way up there with recent releases of theirs for me. It's uh, Combat Grind by Sonic Poison. This is a great tape. My only complaint is that it's over very quickly. Um, seven songs, it looks like. Yeah, seven songs. Um, owing a lot to World Downfall by Terrorizer and uh, Horrified by Repulsion. If you like those two records, you will definitely like this. Um, enough songwriting flair to not just be a straight-up hybrid of the two. Kind of stands on its own. Excellent, excellent stuff. Um, some of the churning kind of elements of it are definitely very terrorizer to me. It's a great, great tape. And then finally, from the cassettes, we've got Noose from Chicago. Three-song demo. Another quick little guy. Just white tape, white label. It uh, came with a sticker. Oh, there it is. Nice sticker. Uh, Chicago band, raw, stripped down, punkish black metal stuff. Owes a lot to Hellhammer and Bathory. Um, very, very tight though. Very catchy. Great concept, you know, the whole thing. It, it opens with a uh, with a sound clip from Witchfinder General with Vincent Price. And uh, the songs are Witch Hunt, Confess Your Sins, and Burn at the Stake. The members are the judge on bass and vocals, the jury on drums, and the executioner on guitar and vocals. So they've got a solid concept there, and <laughs> it really works for it. It's, uh, you know, a little tongue-in-cheek, um, but suitably filthy and aggressive. You know, a little bit of the, that kind of punk spirit that, like, the first Bathory record had, you know, and that, that sort of thing that Hellhammer had. And there's some other influences in there as well, early dirty Scandinavian black metal, Dark Throne, stuff like that, I'd say. But uh, nice and raw and abrasive and simplistic and catchy, which is all things that I like. So, um, Dark Descent had a sale uh, that kind of coincided with a bunch of Crypt stuff being re-released. I've been wanting to get my hands on this for ages. This is In the Maze of Kadath by Catacomb. A French band from the early 90s. Uh, they had this, if I'm not mistaken, they this was re-released earlier on uh, The Crypt, but it sold out. Might have even seen a vinyl release. I don't remember. Pretty sure it did. I'm pretty sure it came out on clear and black. But at any rate, the demand must have been high because Ted reissued it again, just on CD this time. And uh, this is a band when all the interest in early death metal started sparking off about 10 years ago. This is a band that I saw posted on blogs a lot, discussed a lot. I always loved the cover art, of course, the Cthulhu there. And uh, the music's great. 
uh, it's it's great cryptic, kind of obscure death metal. Um, very creepy. Some good keyboards on it. it. Owes a lot to, I'd say, Merciful Fate in spirit in a lot of ways, but it's definitely straight up early '90s death metal too. You know, there's growl vocals, and the you know, pretty heavy, somewhat dissonant kind of guitars. It's fucking great. Uh, Lurker at the Threshold, the first one, has keyboards, but not as many, if I remember correctly. They're more for, like, uh, intros and stuff like that. And um, it's a little bit more raw, straightforward, but both are great. Uh, the, this came out on uh, Wild Rags originally, the, uh, in the Mace of Kata. The Lurker at the Threshold, I think, was just a demo, as far as I know. Uh, Electrocution, this is a old Italian band that saw a re-release from the Crypt. Very, very cool. Very, very cool band. Um, slightly technical, aggressive, you know, death metal. Kind of owing, it seems like, just as much to American death metal as what was going on in Europe at the time. But just technical enough to be impressive without being confusing. <laughs> uh, certainly very heavy, meat and potatoes. Great, great death metal. This includes uh, their first album, Inside the Unreal, as well as four demos. Uh, I haven't dug into the demos yet, but the Inside the Unreal's very, very good. Very, very good. Repurchased this. I had a digi re-release of this first Absu, Barathrium Vitriol. Somebody tell me what the acronym for Vitriol means. Anyway, uh, I had a I had a copy of this, and somehow it just got absorbed into the ether. I don't know where it is. It might be like underneath the seat of my car. At any rate, I was happy to get a good copy of this classic first Absu record. A lot of people kind of credit it as being as much of a death metal record as a black metal record, and I would stand by that. Um, certainly black metal in spirit, but it's got that kind of churning death metal riffage. So good. Um, you know, the, the addition of female vocals on one of the songs is very Celtic Frost. They just, uh, they're just good at summoning a, a very, very fucking malevolent vibe, and I love it. Like, everything they did for their first three or four records, how can you not? We got Hex Morbid Reality. This is a classic Bay Area thrash, but kind of the underdog Bay Area thrash. The dudes that hung out with, like, Sadis and Autopsy. I believe they shared a member with uh, Autopsy at one point or another. At the beginning of the career, they were kind of more of a melodic, maybe sort of like a heathen kind of thrash metal band, and they got progressively more into playing uh, aggressive, bordering on death metal kind of thrash stuff. Certainly if you like uh, Demolition Hammer, Sadis, Numbskull, all the greats of that kind of sound, you will like this Hex record. For years, I just kind of thought they were a generic thrash band I didn't really know what they sounded like and then I ended up with the cassette EP that was previous to this I talked about it on an update a while back and was uh, pleasantly surprised so this came out on Century Media originally re-released <clears throat> re on the crypt as all the aforementioned CDs so far have been this is a great record uh, a little bit more technical there's slower parts it's a little bit more all over the place than, say, Sadist, but it's very similar in sound to, like, Swallowed in Black and uh, Chemical Exposure, a.k.a. Reflections by Sadis. But this is a really cool package. I mean, all these CDs, the line of, the liner notes are all excellent, given a little history from the band, but this one is particularly lengthy. Um, Dan Watson from the band does a lot of talking about just funny stories, retells a bunch of stuff that happened um, leading up to them signing to Century Media, their first time in New York, um, being under the influence of marijuana all the time, and having having just kind of weird run-ins with people, ending up in uh, an elevator with Judas Priest, and uh, giggling and not knowing what to say to them because they were, they were messed up on the, the devil's lettuce, you know, that kind of stuff. Cool, L worth worth the read. It's a it's a fun read. The guy seems like a funny dude. Um, and then because I got that that great Brazilian comp from Leo, I picked up this MX CD. This is the first one, Simoniacal. 
And uh, this wasn't with the Dark Descent stuff. This was uh, actually part of the same distro I got the CD we're listening to from. But uh, anyway, this is fantastic. It's Brazilian thrash. Um, a little less beastly than uh, the type of Brazilian thrash that a lot of people probably think of immediately, namely Sepultura and Sarcophago. It's uh, a little bit more precise in the way of German and East Bay kind of stuff, but it's certainly very feral, regardless of a little bit more technical precision. Um, really, really great stuff. I heard it on the on the compilation. I was like, I've never heard of this band. I'm gonna I'm gonna snag some of this stuff, track some of this stuff down. I also got an Atomica tape with the with the Caligari stuff, but unfortunately, it absorbed some liquids in my bag and uh, is kind of unlistenable now, which is a bummer. <laughs> my own damn fault, you know? Make sure my uh, Tupperware containers when I bring my lunch to work are better sealed. Um, with the Dark Descent stuff, I got one CD, and this is uh, Patricidal Lust by Vastum. Uh, I definitely do far prefer A Hole Below, which is the only other one that I've heard by them, the, the EP that came out. This is still great. It's great lurching, uh, kind of doom-tinged, heavy, cavernous, death metal stuff um, before the addition of Shelby Lermo on guitar uh, great Paul Girardi cover art certainly very 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 good I just think that latest EP that they did, they've done is the best thing so far so I got some LPs most of these are from 20 bucks spin uh, however I picked up this on on uh, Discogs because I couldn't resist I was just craving this band for one reason or another this is classic Massachusetts hardcore guys were originally from the Worcester area then moved to Boston in the early 2000s and I'm talking about the A-Team this was four bones it cost less than the shipping which was five dollars I, I saw this band a few times in the early 2000s I just caught their reunion show three years ago I think it was but rude crude pissed off offensive Boston style hardcore there was a lot of this hardcore blowing up in the early 2000s and it was a great time to be into music um, Tear It Up, Nine Shocks Terror, Rambo, DS-13, all these bands that were kind of bringing back the spirit of uh, neck-breakingly fast hardcore in the early 80s way, but also involving other influences and doing their own thing with it. This band has a pretty significant influence from Poison Idea, I'd say. They even cover Punish Me. Also, it's Slapshot, Negative Effects, all the choke Jack Kelly fronted bands. Uh, great riff style. Uh, I can't remember the name of the band, but the guitarist went on to be in this like kind of, kind of hipstery, stonery band. I think they're called Clouds. But uh, dude was a hell of a guitarist for sure, and you can tell by, you know, simple yet effective and catchy riffs and licks. The occasional good solo. Um, yeah, not 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 positive lyrics uh, <laughs> at all on this, which is something I usually enjoy in my hardcore. Uh, Armor of Apathy being my favorite song, Grow Up being a great song, um, Gate Crusher, and uh, Storm Warning. It just pissed. Fall on Your Sword, the opening song, is awesome. There's a little bit of Motorhead in here, too, as well. I recommend this to anybody. You know, copies are cheap if you can find it. A is for Asshole by the A-Team. So getting into the 20 buck spin stuff, um, go into the stuff that I didn't already own. This is Lawless Age by Weaponizer. This was put out on 20 Bucks Spin. Fantastic, uh, raw, speedy, thrash metal kind of stuff, but involving more extreme influences, particularly rhythm rhythmically. There's a lot of blast beats and stuff like that on it. It's not a one-trick pony, nor does it feel like kind of a, a made-in-the-lab hybrid kind of deal. It's just uh, it's just ripping, ripping thrash metal with some other flavors thrown in there from black and death metal. It's really, it's excellent. Great stuff. Classic uh, crust record here. This came out on Peaceville, reissue on Peaceville, Rise of the Serpent Men by Axe Grinder. Heavily influenced by Amoebix, part of the original wave of crust, uh, along with Deviated Instinct and Prophecy of Doom, that whole scene from the UK. Sounds a lot like Amoebix. Sounds a lot like Amoebix, maybe a little bit more up tempo, but you know how Amoebix had that kind of murky. Venom, Hellhammer, a little bit of Discharge, but all of them, you know, binging on cough syrup kind of sound. That's what we're going with on this one. This is a great record. My continued refusal subliminally to show off what's inside the jacket. There you go, simple one. That, that uh, Weaponizer is actually on a very pretty color, but I don't really care. 
not never go back just like Dag Nasty said never go back uh, it's just an insert for peaceful stuff whatever um, and then the rest of these are kind of like upgrades uh, I've had them on cassette for a while I do know that cassettes kind of decay over time or with repeated plays they get worse every single time you play them sound worse every single time you play them and there's a, a few of these where I'm like, yeah, I want these on vinyl. Especially because um, 20 bucks spin is incredibly reasonable anyway, and they were having a pretty decent sale. And these have gotten a lot of spins since they came out. They're mostly releases from uh, 2015, 2016 that have kind of withstood the, the, withstood the test of time so far. This is Ripper. Experiment of Existence. This band's coming out with a new record this year, and I cannot wait Excellent Chilean uh, thrash, again, the brutal stuff, the heavy stuff, owing a lot to Beneath the Remains by Sepultura and Sadis. Um, non-stop, though. There's not a lot of tempo breaks or breakdowns or slow parts. There's a few here and there, but it's mostly just relentless. Fantastic bass playing, um, great bass sound that's just loud enough in the mix that kind of helps lead the music along. Definitely Cavalera-esque, kind of gruff, um, bordering on death metal kind of shouted vocals awesome stuff relentless crypts remnants of expansion another great uh, kind of doomy death metal band that hopefully they'll come back with another one now that this stuff seems to be getting bigger and bigger in popularity all the time um, great use of like melancholic melody um, I'm no musician, and it's kind of embarrassing that I don't know what this is called, harmonizing, I guess. But the uh, the second guitar layered over the top of the kind of brutal, uh, heavy, lower-end guitar being, you know, kind of higher and harmonized with it, creating sort of a sense of moroseness, whatever the fuck that's called. I mean, it's a very simplistic thing that a lot of bands do, but they do that really well. Um, it's definitely, depth, definitely a lot of depth and sorrow to this and I, I love it great doomy death metal record um, had it for some time my favorite thing that they've probably done and uh, this was a gift from the lady of the house I got that Satan's Hallow LP on LP had it on CD before certainly good great to have on vinyl and eh, you know not a colored vinyl guy but that looks great great marble red U.S. Uh, heavy metal, kick-ass female vocals, powerful stuff. Talked about it a few updates back. Look at that, great cover art. Like that guy. Then we got uh, Witch Vomit. Screams to the tune below. This is one of my favorite death metal records of uh, recent recent times, and uh, you know. Like a lot of bands, it's not reinventing the wheel, but if you look back the past 10 years when a lot of bands have been reinvigorating um, Swedish stuff, reinvigorating incantation and, and early death metal, uh, I can I remember the first couple of bands that started kind of doing this, namely Dizma, I think, was pretty early on. Ugh, oh, who else? Van Helgd was another one, the pretty good band there. There's a, there's a handful of others. Repugnant was actually one of the first. And um, some of those, you know, all those bands are great. All those bands have their moments. Um, Van Helgd, I, I feel like, actually got better later on. Um, the big one that I'm always forgetting, and I'm actually going to check because for some reason I always forget the name of this band. Hold on. All right, I'm back. The band is... Oop shaky arm. The band is Miasmal. This is a good tape, um, but people are losing their shit over Miasmal. And by the time their uh, full lengths came out, I was like, it's okay. You know, it's decent, but I'd rather just listen to Entombed. Um, what I'm roundabout getting at and blathering on about is that Witch Vomit I feel can hold their own next to the original 90s bands. I really do. Um, they have enough originality. They have enough songwriting chops those great roaring um, completely guttural inhuman vocals are just perfectly executed the leads the slow parts especially are, are very very hooky and um, very memorable 
and this is the best thing that they've done so far, I think. It's a tough call between that and the Poison Blood EP. They're both so good. The Poison Blood EP definitely has a little bit more, a little bit more um, slower paced kind of environmental vibe building. And uh, but this one is is a definite corker. Their uh, their demo before this is also great. Um, this was a must have on vinyl for me. I past five years, it's one of my say top ten death metal records that have come out. But anyway, that's enough blabbing for now. I don't know if this was on a... Is this on a cool color that I can show off to YouTube? No, it's on black. And this, all the, Also, this was on uh, Parasitic Records. I keep thinking it was uh, on 20 bucks spin, but it's actually not. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's what I have so far. Um, this is probably going to dry up a little bit. I, I got a couple other classic things that I might... Um, I got in the mail that I might save for another, another update. Just classic death metal. CDs that I never owned that I'm getting now, <coughs> um, but that's it, you know, I'll dig back into the stacks and probably do another nostalgic year sooner than later, but um, I gotta get ready for work, because that's Monday, that's life, kids, you guys have a good one, later.